What's up, engineers? I wanted to show everybody some really cool, powerful stuff you can do Python. I'll basically be able to scrape any web or scrape any website. Why would you want to do this? Well, you could do it for a whole bunch of reasons. For my reason, I wanted to scrape uh, the hackathons and see what products are being used. Maybe you could scrape ESPN, download a whole bunch of data, plop into some uh, sports betting thing that you're doing or your fantasy sports stuff. Maybe scrape Twitter, like whatever you want to do. Python makes it really, really simple. Uh, because all pages are are basically text, kind of. Um, so yeah, so let's just jump right into it. Uh, the first thing that you need to know is that every single website is basically just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So it's it's a lot of text, and text is great because Python and other coding languages make it really really easy to to scrape text. So um, for today's tutorial, we're actually going to be looking at dev posts. We're looking at uh, getting hackathons that are going to end in the coming week. So uh, looking for hackathons that are going to end um, in the next seven days. So so if we come on over to DevPost, we right click on any site, you'll get this in the spec tab, and you'll see popping up on the right side is all the code that is used to render this page. So let's go ahead and start coding. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is import this requests function. This is what it's going to allow us to make the HTTP get calls to get the URL that we're looking for. And we're also going to need to do import BS4 from Beautiful Soup. This is obviously the Beautiful Soup package that's going to allow us to actually do the scraping. So when we get to the website, just to start um, figuring out what we want it to actually scrape, let's just walk through and do what we as a human would do to, to get what we want. So because Basically, that's what you know. All programs are, anyways. It's just code doing exactly what a human would do, just way faster. So, since we're looking for hackathons, oh, brave giving me money, uh, we go over to the hackathons page, and we want to go one step further. We want to look for the blockchain labeled hackathons, and we also want to sort by the submission deadline, which is perfect. We can see up here we get this URL, so now we can actually. We can actually call that URL. We can do um, result equals requests dot get. Um, we can do this URL here, and then just to make sure we have it, we'll do print result dot content. Let's try that out. Python scrape dot pi. And yep, we get a whole bunch of HTML code right here. Um, you can double check to make sure that this is actually the correct URL. Uh, I'm fairly certain that this is correct. Awesome. So now that we have that, we're actually going to take the content and put it in this, excuse me, this SRC variable. And then we're going to load it into our soup object which is going to allow us to actually do um, actually do everything. So just literally right like that. Perfect. So now we have our soup object. We have the main page that we're looking to scrape. Uh, let's jump right into it. So we go back over to the website and now we say, okay, let's find the tags that are representing these. So just another like HTML refresher. Everything is between tags. So once we hit that inspect, we're going to look in here for the tags that represent each one of these hackathons. So as you can see, as I scroll over, it highlights blue. It's saying, hey, this tag is representing this chunk. And as we go down, uh, we can see we can get more and more individualized. So, so this is so this results class right here, this results div, this is going to have all everything that we want. And we could even go a little bit further and we can see that we actually have this challenge listing and this this featured challenge um uh, uh this featured challenge href uh right here and if we click this in a new tab it brings us right to the hackathon so we're actually looking to get these um this url right here so what we we can do a number of things we could pull this challenge results and say for each challenge result, let's let's go through the browse and, and blah, blah. But 
I'm, I'm fairly confident that, and I've already looked through this, that this data role equals feature challenge is gonna actually return all of these URLs or all of these, um, all of these, these blocks here, um, which is exactly what I want. So basically the way Beautiful Soup works is it says, give me the criteria that you're looking for. And there's a method called find all that will allow us to find everything that has that. So we have this data role, feature challenge. This will give us, you know, everything in this, in this A, um, in this A bit here. So let's go ahead back to our code. Now we're going to create our list of featured challenges equals soup dot find all. We're going to find all the A's, so all the A tags um, with attributes equals, remember we saw that data role, we can just flip back real quick, where this data role equals featured challenge. That's exactly what we're looking for. So we want to find all the A tags where the, uh, where the data role um, is, is mapped to featured challenge. Great, and so this will return so this will set this featured challenge as a list and we're gonna just check. We're just gonna do a for loop real quick. So for each feature challenge in feature challenges, this is a, a bit of syntactic sugar, a little, little, little fun way to, to just loop through this list. For each featured challenge in feature challenges, let's just do print, um, let's just do print feature challenge. So this should print um, the whole block, this should print this whole block uh, for every one of these feature challenges. Let's just try to run this just to see. Clear that on the bottom, python scrape.py. And it looks like it printed out a bunch of stuff. Uh, we, we do find these, the hrefs for the feature challenges, so that's good. Um, and let's see if we can find another one. Oh, there's another one. We can actually just follow this link to make sure this actually brings us to a hackathon. Oh, or a user's picture. Um, let's let's see if we can grab one that brings us to a hackathon. We want to make sure we have it. So thumbnail image. That's not what we want. We want this. We want a boom. This brings us to a hackathon site, which is perfect because that's exactly what we're looking to do. So cool. So we're getting this list of these a tag objects and, and what's inside of them. Uh, it's, it's returning everything inside this a tab object, uh, which is great. So now what we want to do is we want to just get this. Uh, we want to just get this href. We want to just get this hyperlink. So how do we do that? So we can actually keep um, we can actually keep this as it is and we can just do Keep this for loop, and let's even set a a list at the top. Hackathons equals blank. Um, hackathons equals excuse me. Hackathons that append, and this is just going to be a, a a list of URLs, and we're going to append feature challenge dot attrs dot attributes href and now for each hackathon in hackathons print hackathon so what's happening here so we've found all these a tags right we found all the a tags and it's created this list of a tag objects now we're saying, all right, go through all these featured challenges, all these a tag objects, and we're going to pull out the href attribute, right? So if you look through the, um, the beautiful soup documentation, you can find ways to pull out whatever you want. Like, let's say you wanted to pull out just like the text up here. Um, you want to pull out the image, whatever you want to pull out. Um, you know, that, that attributes piece is going to be really crucial and really important for you to, to play around with. So, Great, so we're going to append to the uh, hackathons or print it out. Let's 
go ahead and, and try to run this. Awesome. So as you can see here, we literally have just a list of URLs. We have a list of hackathons here. So that's that's perfect. That's exactly what we want to do. Um, we have all this, this fun stuff. Great. So we want to go one step further. We want to find if they're if they're in the right date range. So we want to find those the hackathons that are 50 days or less. So we want to find the eligible hackathons that are just going to be actually just these two, right? We don't need this one. We don't need this one. We don't need this one because these are these are too far down the line. They're, they're way out. So how do we get this 48 days? How do we get this 48 days to submit? So we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to dive a little bit deeper. So before we just looked at this challenge listing and we grabbed this. Now let's go a little bit deeper in the code to find where this part gets highlighted. So it sees submissions open. That's exactly what we want to get highlighted because that's what we're looking for. But we want to get this, this 48 days. Let's actually look for one that we want. Uh, let's look for one of these featured listings that we want here. Uh-huh, great, let's go to this one. And let's just open all these up till we find that 48 days section. And maybe there's some nice stuff around there. Again, what you we can do as well, um, if you didn't want to find like the exact tag, is you could find, um, you do something like, you know, you could do something like this. And then for each featured challenge, you could say, you know, featured challenge dot find all you know, blah, 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 whatever. So you can do like kind of find alls on top of find alls or even finds uh, a single find will return one. But uh, I'm fairly confident that um, there's there's going to be a, a nice single find all that we can do to get all this. So we're going to roll into this. We're going to go into here and into here. Aha, great. So this is actually exactly what we're looking for. So we found this time class equals the value time ago. Um, and because I've checked out, you know, this whole page already, I know that this value time ago um, is going to return exactly what I'm looking for. It's going to return this time ago bit. So uh, we're actually going to go back here and I'm going to go one step further. Um, so actually, like I was just saying, so for each feature challenge, so remember that this time ago bit is inside of this a tag, right? You see how you do this down tick? Everything in here is inside of this a tag and we can search on this a tag now that we found it. So um, so for each feature challenge right here, we're gonna do dot find um, time. So we're looking for these time bits and the attributes equals class value time ago. And here, we're just looking for the dot text. So we're looking for the text of this of this bit right here. So in this time class, or in this time tag, we're going to look for the text inside of it, which we know is is 48 days. Um, so great. Flip back here, just just read it. We're we're finding a time tag with these attributes, and we want the text. So let's just comment all this out real quick, and then we'll print. Um, we'll set this to time equals, and then we'll even do print time. Let's go ahead and run this. And we actually get this weird error, right? What's going on here? We're getting this has no attribute text. Well, again, I've already kind of skimmed through it and, and you run into some of these. Um, I've ended up finding out that some of them don't have text in them. So they didn't have a, a dot text um, attribute, as it says right in the, the link here. So we'll just do something really simple and kind of cheaty, um, but I'm content because, you know, this is just a tutorial. And what we're saying here is we're saying, hey, try to do this. If you can't find this dot text bit, well, it's probably not what we're going to look for anyways, and just 
just keep going, just move on. So now we're going to try again. I have to save so that we can try again. And perfect. So we got these three dates in here. So is that is that correct? So let's look. So this one doesn't have time. Um, so that's correct. This one has a date. This one has a date. That's two. That's three. And one, two. These ones have dates, but maybe they don't have these text objects. That's kind of interesting. I guess we could look into that a little bit more. But I know from uh, having already, already done this a couple of times that uh, those three dates are referring to these three hackathons. So um, we've found exactly what we're looking for. So uh, which is perfect. So because this August 18 one is referring to this Bitcoin SV hackathon. So great. So now. Now we have the time um, of these hackathons or of each one of the hackathons. Now we can say, OK, great. Let's uh, compare that to today. See how many days are in between. And if it's 50 days, more than 50 days, don't add it to our hackathon list. So um, this is a little bit trickier. And boom, <laughs> I just did a little bit of magic here. I uh, added some added these date time uh, packages in here just to convert. Uh, that that time stamp that we were seeing, uh, we're actually going to convert it to this time left um, using this date time dot strip time right here, and we're getting now from right here, and we're, we're saying hey, if right now is still greater than time left minus fifty days, then we're going to add it to our hackathons list. So we're just checking that fifty day mark, adding to the hackathons list. If we run this and we print the hackathons at the bottom. Now that I've uncommented the rest of my code, we should get just those two hackathons. Let's try to run it right now. And we can double check to make sure that these are the two hackathons. Great. 48 more days to submit. Perfect. So it's that icon hackathon and this Theta Labs one. This one also should be the 48. Perfect. And there we go. Fantastic. So that's basically how you can scrape any website. There are a lot of features in the beautiful soup documentation that you can use to get anything that you want. Um, I would definitely recommend checking it out and good luck to you next time. And if you have any questions, feel free to put any in the comments and in descriptions, hit me up on Twitter, whatever. Looking forward to seeing you guys more. Talk to you soon. Thanks. So the Now, an issue that you guys may run into, you might be, be trying to pull using Beautiful Soup, but you're running into these really weird issues where um, you're getting crazy stuff. And sometimes what will happen is when a, uh, when a site has a lot of JavaScript running in the background, the pure HTML isn't going to work very well because it's going to give, it's, it needs to run the JavaScript um, for it to actually work. And Beautiful Soup can't actually run the, the JavaScript for you. So you're going to need a web driver to actually be able to do this. So stay tuned for the next video and I'll show you how to do that.